I think that this is a great a great place to uh, talk about what state machines are because I think that yeah. a lot of people probably are are confused about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, state machines describes like really concisely. It's just it's a collection of states. So for example, you could have if you're loading something, you could be in the idle the loading, the success, or the failure state. And um, basically, it's it's these rules that tell you how you could go between these states. For example, if you're in the idle state and a fetch event happens, now you're in the loading state. Mm. And so one of the rules with finite state machines is you could only be in one state at a time. So you can't be both in the loading and the success state at the same time, or the error and the success, obviously, you can be in both of those at the same time. You're only in one of those states at a time, and you move through those states in a very predefined way. And those are called transitions. But uh, why, for why, example, what is the benefit of only being in, in one state at the same time? Why would you add that kind of limitation to your application? Well, in short, it's determinism. Uh, take a traffic light, for example. This is sort of like the, the hello world of state machines. You would not want a traffic light to be both on green and red at the same time. Right? Yeah. So you want to be absolutely guaranteed that you're only in one of those states. And so by states, these finite states define the behavior of a system or an application. And so you're saying when you're in this state, this is the behavior that can happen. So for instance, going back to my loading example, let's say that in the idle state, that is the only state where the user is allowed to press fetch or press submit or something. And so we could define that behavior only for the idle states. So in the loading states, we could have different behavior where nothing happens, we're just waiting for the request to resolve. And just like that, we've solved the problem of, have you ever been to a form and accidentally clicked the submit button many, many times, or you know, accidentally reloaded your page and some unexpected behavior happens? That is solved by state machines mm. because you could only do a certain set of things in each given state. And so it's not a, it, it is a limitation but it's a it's a good limitation because it makes your application behavior so much more predictable. So with a state machine it seems to me that this is it reminds me a little bit about like the way Redux forces you to think a lot about your your state. It requires you to d design your state in a way. Um, Sort of, uh, yeah. Um, and state machines, to me, all seem like you just it just forces you to think more about the different states that your your applications are is going to be be in uh, up front. Yes. Um, it seems to me also that then, at ch and correct me if I'm wrong, a challenge with that would be that well, you have to think about things up front and when you think about things up front then it's kind of like hard to play things by ear it's a lot of like the, the whole problem with upfront design you know like this is this good for prototyping is what I'm saying yeah yeah this is one of the challenges where uh, you know you do have to design it up front however uh, that that's sort of why I created X state is because uh, you are able to play with that model and just rearrange states or add new states or remove states uh, as you want. But I, I always say that state machines are a good refactor target. So if your your business logic requirements aren't clear, then code it however you want. Mm. And once it becomes at this level of complexity where you're like, okay, I understand the behavior, I need to organize it now. That's when you start like grouping these into finite states and modeling it in a more strict way. Because otherwise, without doing that, you're coding your app in a way where anything can happen at any time. Mm. And we know that that's just not true. For example, if it's loading, you shouldn't allow the user to keep pressing submit. You should say that should do nothing. And uh, just having that sort of predictable behavior. Yeah. So, uh, so that's state machines. But what is. Uh, what what is X state in this uh, in this world? X state is a library that allows you to create state machines. Now, 
First of all, you don't need a library to create state machines itself. You could use a switch statement. Someone mentioned Redux. It's very possible to create state machines in Redux because state machines are just a pattern. What XState enables is state machines and more. It enables uh, you to create what's called state charts. And state charts are extended state machines. They have other features like you could have nested states, parallel states, history states, actions, uh, timers, invoke services, all of these complex things where you probably want a library for it because the algorithms are very, uh, very, very complicated. And that's part of the reason why it, it is 15 kilobytes, but in version five, we are going to bring that size down. And also, if you just want finite state machines with X states, there's X state slash FSM, which is only one kilobyte. So don't complain about the size. I need it really, really, really tiny. <laughs> All right, so that's so that that's X state. I would like to uh, thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant has been a sponsor for, for a long time, um, and Brilliant.org slash FFF, I think it is, right? Um, if you go here, you'll get uh, a lot, like twenty percent off the annual subscription. Uh, Brilliant is a uh, like an interactive learning platform where you can learn tons of different things. Um, but the thing that I tend to uh, recommend is the computer science fundamental stuff, and uh, if you're preparing for interviews, or the uh, uh, computer science math if you're getting into uh, machine learning, because that's usually what you run into. Uh, and uh, I was sorry. I was just watching that somebody said, said like wash hands and sanitize. Yes, Corona. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we are going to do a very simple drag and drop, and we're gonna see how we could implement drag and drop, which has been notoriously a really confusing thing that a lot of developers would reach for a library for or something else. And instead, we're gonna try to do it ourselves and see just how easy it could be. Or easy in quotes, like you know. yeah, yeah. Like, well, but <laughs> that's an awesome example because, as people in the chat said, it's drag and drop is a nasty thing to implement uh, generally. Uh, it's like uh, so, uh, yeah, that's super fun. Let's do it. So where do we start? All right, so we are going to start. Well, let's make sure that we have. I, I added some styles. Uh, so let's hmm. Let's serve this somehow. Well, what's your favorite way to serve this? Well, actually, you could just open the index.html, right? All right. Yeah, I'm in it in the index.html. What do you do? You want? Oh, or do we want to jump to index.js? Uh, well, hmm. <laughs> where <laughs> where do we start with this? Uh, so what I want to do is just make sure that it's actually showing on the screen. Oh, okay. So okay. if we could run a server or something like yeah, that, yeah, and actually with Live Share you could share servers. Yeah, too. that's a, such a cool thing with uh, Live Share. So uh, la, 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 la. it was such a long time since I did this. What's a good um, uh, web server to use nowadays? Do we have like some? I think uh, do we have some uh, kind of MPX thing? I think what you could do is like MP, MPX serve, and it'll just um, let's see, it'll just serve it magically. Because I figured that somebody things. would have written something like that. Ah, that is so cool, MPX serve. All right, so let's see localhost. This used 5, to be 000. so hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's it's see. We have everything. Okay, so we have the box. Um, ah, I forgot the styles. Okay, so. Link style sheet and I called it styles.css. Okay, so if all goes well, we should see a. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if serve like auto reloads. It probably doesn't. Um, what do we? I don't save. Mark. Let's see. Let's inspect this. I, I don't think it's free. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it should be. OK, yeah, so we have, have the styles here. It doesn't have uh, any height. All right, so uh, let's take a look. Styles. 
just making sure that everything's coming through. Um, Feeling sources panel. Oh, right, because we didn't actually add styles. I just add some boilerplate styles <laughs> that I like to use. But let's actually um, let's let's make the box visible. And so what we could do is I'm I'm going to be in styles.css. Yeah. Love working in here. So let's just give it a height of like 20 v min with 20 v min and. What's what's your favorite color? Uh, ninety nine CCFF. For some reason, it's the only it, uh, hex code I know off the top of my head. I've never bothered. <laughs> um, Great, awesome. All right, so we have a box. What is what and like vmin is a new uh, uh, CSS property for me. Yeah, so um, viewport units are, uh, you have viewport width, which is the width of your entire viewport, your your, uh, your browser window, and viewport height is uh, your height. And so if you divide these into 100, you get like one VW is one of the viewport widths and one VH is one of the viewport heights. And so Vmin is just the smallest of those. Mm. So in most use cases, that would be the, uh, the browser height because it's usually wider, but not always. I mean, sometimes on mobile devices, the width is smaller. Mm. Uh, so anyway, this is the box that we want to drag and drop. And so um, I'm going to go in index.js and uh, let me just uh, console.log xd just to make sure it's there. We're loading it via unpackage, so I just want to verify. I wish it had a live reloading. Okay, so it is there. Yeah, which is which is awesome. Um, okay, and uh, you're going to be doing a lot of this, but I'm going to just start you off. Yeah. The first thing that we do with XState is we're going to uh, create a machine, so a state machine, and so that's with create machine. And so create machine. Everything is going to go inside of here. And then we have a machine, and we have uh, lots of states that go with that machine. So the initial state is going to be um, like basically what we start off with in the machine. And in this case, we could just say idle. This is when we're not really dragging the box, like just nothing is happening. And then we have states. And so the two states that we're going to deal with right now are going to be idle, of course, that's our first state, yeah. and dragging. So that's the state when the box is being dragged. Fair enough. And so, yeah. So, so the, an idle I, and dragging, um, these are basically the, the equivalent of, in, in a game it would be Mario uh, jumping or crouching. Exactly. So I'm going to call this a drag drop machine. And um, also, I'm going to do something else. Um, this is. I don't know, well, one of my favorite parts of this is um, you could put it in a visualizer. So I'll go ahead and uh, share that link in the chat so other people could play around with it as well. Um, right now, it's very simple. But if I take that exact code and I put it in a visualizer, then uh, you're going to be able to see the states. Right now, there's no events. There's no transitions. It's just those states. Um, in the visualizer. <clears throat> can you do a funny thing? So you can, can you paste that in chat again? Because I didn't have the chat open on my coding computer. Oh, OK. Do you want me to paste it on Twitter? No, yeah, or... send, just send it again in stream chat. I just lost the chat. Link. Oh, OK. No problem. Oh, it says your message is identical to the one <laughs> that was just sent. <laughs> That's ah. so funny. OK, send it on Twitter then. So I will, I will make it non-identical <laughs> <laughs> adding three dots. Did that work? All right. Oh, the detection is so all right. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's that's a hilarious. Okay, hang on. Then I will. Da, da, da. There we go. And I'll check that so that we can see it on screen. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. That is really really funky. Okay, I'm starting to get why people uh, people like this. <laughs> yeah, and I am working on improving the visualizer too, so that's going to be um, coming soon. So you could think of this machine as sort of a blueprint of how the logic is going to work for, you know, for dragging and dropping. Mm. So 
Look, let's think about um, events for a minute. Yeah. So I could say on, and this is going to be in terms of like some event or event and next date. So uh, what we want to do here is we want to say on an event, move to this next date or go to this next date. So in idle, I'm guessing when we do a mouse down, that's going to move us to dragging. All right. So I'll let you do that. <laughs> All right. So and like on it. Okay. So okay. So these are. Mm. And mouse down. And then we want to change that to like. Uh, we want to somehow change the state now to dragging. Uh, yeah. But and this so is not how you do it. Uh, uh, it, it actually is. You, you could do it that way. Uh, there is a way. Um, actually, what we would want to do, that's a shorthand for this. Yeah. I, exact same thing. Yeah, I think that this, uh, this shorthand seems too magic to me. Uh, even You're though right. it's, it, it's right. one of those so. things that is kind of like, uh, when Haskell takes it too far, like it just becomes so <laughs> terse that you have no idea what is happening. Yeah, and so in dragging, let's let's. How would we go back to idle? We would probably want a um, mouse up. Yeah, right. Sure. So mouse up. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then we go back to idle. Right. Or we could do it the non-magic way, target. Right. I, I agree with you. I don't like magic too much. Yeah. Uh, the reason that I, um, you know, added the string thing is because again for prototyping, it's really nice to just type in the string and then have that all displayed there. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. When you're just like playing around. Mm hmm. All right. So um, that same visualization, I updated it so you could refresh it and now you could actually just play around going between each of those states. Ooh, nice. So, okay, right. so if I, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and what's, what's cool is that it, uh, it actually uh, uh, enforces the rules, this diagram. So if I click mouse up here, now I cannot mm -hmm. click mouse up. It's not possible. Uh, I, right, exactly. That's pretty cool. All right, so let, let's actually make this rule, you know, because we, we do want to make this box, um, you know, drag and drop and all of that stuff. So in order to do that, this, this machine, again, is just a blueprint. Hang on, we it's have a question just, from just, Korean American uh, Barbecue, which I actually uh, think is a great question. Does that automatically set up event listeners, or do you do that manually? Ah, no. So you have to do it manually, and that's because I, you know, like you said, I want to avoid as much magic as possible, and you could also have custom events. So you could think of this in sort of a Redux sort of way, where the event handlers aren't set up automatically. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. And so, um, to to make this machine alive, we have to create a service, and that's just. Uh, yeah, you could think of services as microservices where you have the code, where the code doesn't really do anything, but when you actually like make it alive, then you create an instance of that code, that service mm. living somewhere. Um, so I'll call this drag drop service, and all we do is we interpret the drag drop machine, and th this is the only like boilerplate thing I'll set up for you here. Um, and we could listen to on transition, which is going to give us the state. And so every single time that state changes, we could console.log that state and see all that's happening there. And we'll go ahead and start it. What does inter so, like interpret to me seems a little bit like a uh, weird, weird word here. Can you explain the logic mm -hmm. for it for that naming? Right. So. All of these come from um, from what state charts are, what state machines are, and the SDXML spec. So I don't really um, I don't really invent any of these terms. Ah. So I probably would have chosen a different term. But um, interpret what a machine needs to be interpreted. So like I said, it's a blueprint, and um, in order to make it actually alive and something that can respond to events and do things, it needs to be interpreted. Ah. And so all, all that this is doing 
is um, this create machine is actually completely stateless. Like we're, we're, we don't have any internal state in it. Oh. And so I could like console.log um, drag drop machine dot transition. And this is a pure function. So we could say if we're in the idle state and a mouse down event happens, what's going to be our next state? And so if we go into the browser, um, this auto reloads, you're, you're going to see. Uh, uh, so it. Well, it, it says dragon, the, the other one. Yeah, so it's that, basically it says, a, it, like, it's sort of like a fancy data structure, the, yes. the machine. Okay. Exactly. And, all right, so I'll remove that. And um, yeah, so, so basically it's just creating a live version of that machine. So um, let's let's actually now map these mouse up or yeah these mouse down and mouse up events to actual events. All right. Uh, so, I'll let you do that. All right. Map these mouse down events to actual event. So. So we'll we'll probably need the box first, like a reference to the box element. All right. Cool. And that was an idea. So I'm just gonna dump it here for now. Uh, yeah. Const box. Down, learning American keyboard layout. Uh, <laughs> document, docket, element by ID. Eep. I call that box. Box. That's yep. Cool. And then uh, event listener. Wow, I can still code some. That's awesome. Uh, and we had, we'll start with mouse down then. Yeah. Uh, and uh, takes a function which takes an event, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah! Halp! Let's see. Uh. <laughs> some, some magic happened there. Let's see. Cool. Uh, and. All right. So, so, so now we want to send that event to the uh, drive drop service. And we could, we could actually send that event as is because uh, native browser events already have a type on them. So if you think of Redux, you know, our event objects have a type. Yeah. And so that's going to be service.send and the events goes there. So in this case, it's the drag drop service that we're sending that events to. Ah, uh, okay. Doom, doom, doom. So drag drop service is our sort of event, like our actual state tracker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could think of it that way. Uh, and so we would just send the events directly to that. Yeah. So, I, whoops. So if we just send mouse down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that will work. Um, but. And so, yeah. If you, if you now look at the console of the browser, cool. you'll, you'll see a change. Boom. As you put your mouse. All down. right. So now, yeah. Okay. I see it. Actually, here that we now see that it uh, it now changes dragging. Where did you have? The, oh yeah, yeah. So this is from here, the on transition uh, handler. This is mm -hmm. a really, like, the really handy um, handy way of debugging uh, debugging applications, because this right, is, yeah. this would require quite a bit of uh, like it's it's just a nice way of of, of tracking what is what is happening. Mhm. Mm yeah, so, so let's add one for mouse up as well. Yes, let's do it. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So, and so, uh, so one one part sorry, of me one one part of me is like now. Uh, I like that the framework is not afraid of this boilerplate. Um, because the duplication here is something that would uh, would make some people go like, "Oh no, this is boilerplate." But the nice part is that it's also explicit. You can track it. If we just remove these and and figure out a way to remove automatically remove these duplications, with a lot of uh, frameworks do, you end up with magic, and it's impossible to understand what is going on. Right. Anyway, uh, we have a mouse up event. Cool. So, dragging, idle, dragging, idle, dragging, idle. Yeah, and now if I hold down the mouse, it will be dragging. And if mm -hmm. I let go, 
it should return to idle. Yes, brilliant. Yeah. I'm going to make this easier to see in the actual uh, browser. Uh, this is just for fun. So I'm I'm using the data set. Have you used it? I'm sure you've used data set before. It's super, super useful. Um, state.to strings. You, you don't have to worry about this. All that's happening is that state value, like whether it's dragging or idle, it's going to be displayed directly on the body. Like, so. me through, like uh, you said that you probably used data sets before. Like you should have asked yeah. me if I used data sets before. I have not. Uh, like because I'm a uh. I'm a YouTuber nowadays. I'm like a tech journalist. We've been <laughs> like a lot of times. What what it is? It or like some kind of uh, key value store that are built into the browser nowadays? Oh yeah. So um, data attributes are are attributes where you know all HTML elements have attributes, but if you want to define your own attributes, then you could do that using um, data attributes. Mm. And uh, so the data set API allows you to uh, interact with that uh, using um, just JavaScript. So, but it's not showing for some reason. Oh, I, because I love that Robert idea. Table says, I've never heard of this. Why do people ever pay me money? I feel the same way, Robert Tables. I feel the same way. <laughs> I know. Um, Okay, so, so mm, zero. Okay. Okay, but now all right, mouse so down broke do, for some reason. All right. Do Do you see the um? If you reload your browser, do you see the the status in the right? Yeah, I do. But I need to resize this window a little bit. And the audience will see it, I think. All right. Oh yeah. So um, one common problem, and this is something that I've spent hours on like just trying to figure out with drag drop is that you'll listen to mouse down on the actual events but mouse up you want that to be on the container element uh, elements uh, so in this case you might want to listen to mouse up on the body instead of on the elements and that's going to be important for mouse move as well because uh, with the browser it's a little bit weird but when you move your mouse or your pointer device, sometimes it could be faster than the element moves, which means your pointer will escape the element. Uh, and then suddenly you're no longer dragging, which is a really, really frustrating thing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. So now we have body event listener. And so um, I'm gonna reload, just make sure that works. Cool, so, so now we're going between dragging and idle. Um, and so that's working pretty well. All right. Brilliant. All right, so mm -hmm. so uh, now we actually need to uh, grab Ooh. this and and uh, attach it to the mouse cursor, I suppose. So at least that's what I how like what's a good approach to do that. Um, so my approach, I, I really like using the native events. So instead of send mouse down, I'm going to send events, and this event is going to include like events dot client x, which we could use and also events.clients y. Mm. And so we could use both of those and really help out. Um, now, one, one common criticism of uh, state machines is that it's just finite states. And what if you have to actually represent something uh, that's you know a little bit more infinite, such as extended states? Ah. And so this is um, this is a core concept to state charts, and it's called extended states. And the next state I call it context because it's like a contextual state that's sort of attached to this state. And so um, I'll just set this up. Uh, we could have things like x zero, y zero, and um, these are going to be like just our pointer positions. Like when we click, that's what we want to keep track of. And also, we might want to keep track of dx, which is uh, how far on the x-axis uh, we've moved, and dy, which is how far on the y-axis we moved. I like. I think we're j like jumping a little bit ahead because I don't understand why mm. you want to track that at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, we we do want to make it move. So. All right. Um... Yeah. But anyway, like oh, I, I kind of want to just <laughs> draw it before. Like I, I was thinking of, of, I was just thinking about drawing the the thing at the right position right now. Right. 
So how do we get these con like, how do we update these context uh, parameters from the client X and client Y? And how do we get them out to draw them on the screen? Good question. All right. So um, in order to do that, we have to assign uh, to this context. And ah. so there's an assign function that uh, that represents an action. And actions in state machines are side effects. Ah. Uh, and so th this would be a side effect. All right. So, cool. So how do we, when how do we trigger that side effect? All right. So. All side effects are triggered due to events. In this case, uh -huh. mouse down, we probably want to track uh, where that uh, where that pointer is. So that would be an action. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay. So that's actions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and does assign give us like some object for that? Yes, assign gives you an object, and all this object does is it describes. Um, how you're supposed to update the state. And so you could pass in a function um, that that returns the next state. So. OK, so look, uh, so this, wait, so I get, can give this a function? Yeah, you can give it a function. OK, cool. And the function, hang on. Ah. And this is going to give us the, the mouse event. It will give you the mouse event as so it gives you the current context first, okay, and the mouse event as well. Yep, cool. And with that, then we, oh, okay. So um, I must like like this would be like the naive way to do it, but I'm not like this seems like it wouldn't work. But mouse event dot client is. Would this that, work? That will technically work. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, uh, it, it will technically work. You are mutating context, uh, which I mean is yeah secretly okay. But you know, obviously, you should try to return like a new context. <laughs> like, no, should we do that or not? Oh, so yeah, you should try to be as mutable as possible. So instead of this context X, oh, we could like yeah, yeah. So we spread do, the context. Uh, something like. Um, and I. Yeah, you got it. I have done Redux at some point. Yeah, at, this at is, some point in my life. Uh, and this, this is, and then we want the X to be that, and then Y. Hang on, uh, mouse event dot client Y. If if, if it mm -hmm. didn't. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm, I went ahead and I logged the, so we're logging the context in the console. And so we could see what happens in the browser when we actually do that. Oh, sweet. So now, oh, OK. Now I think I know why you want to the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are just, because we are just logging the position at at the time of dragging. We are not constant, constantly updating it when dragging. Right. OK, cool. So now we have, uh, we now have uh, the mouse event updating the context. Mm -hmm. But how then do we get the, uh, the ball to actually use that, that state? Oh, the, uh, the box? Yeah. So we could do that just for now. We could do that directly in on transition. Because over here, we receive the state.context and we receive those x, y values. Now, we're not going to use those x, y values directly, because that's just tracking where on the box we clicked. Mm. What's going to be more important is those dx and dy values, or how far we dragged from that original point. But let's make the mistake first, so that we, like, okay. um, uh, so otherwise, I won't truly, otherwise, I or the audience, yeah, for yeah, that yeah. Matter, won't understand <laughs> what the hell we're, why we're doing things. Um, All right, sounds good. Uh, so uh, I, this means that we have a state, and in state we have access to the context. So I'll just mm -hmm. do like a box dot. Uh, I don't know. How do you do this in t like top X or something? No, <laughs> God. I... Uh, how, how about style dot set property? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a oh, bit yeah. verbose, but set property. 
this is uh, okay. and then we have well uh, what is it top x top top x left 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 or well left for x right or it, it's just left sorry just just left and then yeah yeah oh god i'm so broken today all right uh, uh, that's and monday say the context it, it's a like it no my choice is always on monday but like this is monday monday man okay <laughs> state.context.x uh, yeah and we probably want to add pixels cool so. all right to see let's that give it no cannot access box before initialization no of course not gonna put it there Whop. cool all right so now the x is x is working yay I'll just, okay I'll it's, just, it's moving yeah cool i'll do that with y as well okay cool so, yeah so now whenever you click that's where the box is going to move which isn't exactly what we want but it does demonstrate how these values are updating uh the box based on the state change so all right so that's good cool so now uh we want want this actually because it's not actually moving following the cursor now that i'm moving right and so so that's what that dx and dy ah. are for us so we might need to do a little bit more math and uh let's add another um another event just to do this because we forgot to add mouse move mm. when we're actually moving the mouse so and again that's something we're going to want to add to the body so let's do that do it down here body dot uh, add event listener mouse move mm. right and then I suppose we want like we want to shove this into the drop service yeah the drag drop service uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, we can just send it directly. So this will give us access to the uh, to the states inside, mm -hmm. uh, and then on when we are dragging and only when we are dragging, we want yes. to have access to. We want we we'll get a mouse move event. Mm -hmm. Mouse move. <laughs> God, there we go. Uh, yeah. No, but this so here, here we want a function, right? Uh, no, no. So same thing. You want an object where you have a target, and this target, since you know we're still dragging, the target's going to be exactly the same. So we're just going to say target. Yeah, dragging. Because we're we're still dragging, and uh, now we got to do a little bit of math. So that same actions, we could probably copy and paste the one at the top. Um, because we're going to be updating dx and dy now. And so that's to get uh, how far away from the original points the mouse actually traveled so that we could use that. And so now we could change dx and dy. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, dy, but we need to do some uh, like Math. subtraction here from the extent context. Yes. So context dot x let's see mine i think it's minus yeah like this is one of the things that is just easier to just see <laughs> the, yeah uh but this well, well we'll see if we did it the wrong way <laughs> yeah like it probably it's gonna be intuitively i think it's gonna be plus here but i don't know let's see yeah well we'll play around with this and see what happens all right let's see okay but now we so, actually um... also need to use these yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we can just see in the console, though. See here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice, nice debugger. OK, so I'm dragging to the right now. I start to drag mm -hmm. and DX. OK, it's the wrong thing. Like, it's because it's getting, it's it's minus now, and it should be, it should be positive. It should be uh, Right. So I'm going to change okay. this to plus. I'm gonna debug this. So now it's correct. See what dy is. dy is right though. 
because I'm dragging down and then dy is turning negative. Is that correct? Yeah. Do we want it that way though? No. We want it to be uh, plus as yeah, well. No. I think so. So I I think uh hmm. If if we do it the other way around, <laughs> like if we um if we do client x minus context.x, I think that that's going to work. Context minus. So client minus context. Oh, OK. Let's try that. I, honestly, that's one of the most confusing parts for me, too. But it's one of those things where if one way doesn't work, then it's probably the other way. Yep. Okay, and I think those will be the correct values. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, yeah, that works. And so, so I guess now we should style using those dx and dy values instead of the um, instead of the x and y values. Mm hmm. Cool. So state context dot x. Oh, I get. But hang on. So wait, um, they need. We need to use both, right? We need to subtract subtract the. Uh, uh no, because um, because all we're doing is measuring distance. So dx just represents how far away. It exactly. Moves. And yeah, so so we could use just that, just dx, like that, and dy like that. Okay, I like doesn't make sense to me yet, but. So uh, basically, if you drag, all right, so we're getting the x position, which doesn't matter where that position is, that's just used to track how far it moves. Oh, and so if we move 10 okay. pixels to the right, then left should be 10 pixels, regardless of where it is. OK, OK. So, so we set the property to the distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's constantly up there. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's that's funky. But okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Am uh, Amesni points out that uh, Marsan is currently on body rather than box, but that's by exactly. intent and uh, by intent, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's on purpose because if you move your mouse really fast sometimes it will escape the elements. And so you want to be keeping track of that mouse position um, in the bigger container. Because imagine if your element moves really slow compared to your mouse, you're, you're no longer going to be dragging it. All right, cool. Da -da -da. Nice. Someone said too much math. This is grade school addition and subtraction. I don't know how that's too much math, but. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fine, right. it is like, uh, I think that it was me being. It's too much math for a person doing doing streaming. I, I, <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. No, no, no it, it's not that complicated. Um, it's just something that you just. It's a kind of math that you immediately get after you play around with it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, Speaking of math, like so, th there's this weird behavior, of course, uh, that you saw that when you click and then you click again, now we no longer have like the the box is no longer under us. So I have to think about how to do that. Like when we click, uh, and then when we click again, now we're going to be um, yeah somewhere else. So. So, so we have to keep track of those values somehow. All right, so, Thinking all right. That. Brilliant. Okay, so, so bring me in a little bit here. Um, mm -hmm. We, um, right now, what problem are you solving? We are, um, we're looking at, like, right now, I, I can drag the, the ball. Uh, however, if I start dragging it again, 
it jumps up back to its original position. Yeah. Uh, and why is this? So it's because uh, when we go back to the idle state and then we click on it again, now we get a brand new X and Y position. Um, and so uh, even though the element has moved, uh, it'll be like that brand new X, Y position will say, oh, you only moved it you know, 10 pixels, where in reality, it's probably moved 100 or 200 pixels before that. So my mm -hmm. guess here is what if um, we take the previous, oh wait, no, 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 we can't do that. Why not? Uh, well, because then it's going to keep adding on itself and it's going to go like exponentially far. So <laughs> I, I have an alternate idea though. I, I have a plan. And that plan is, um, it might seem silly, but using six variables instead of four. Oh. Because now what we want to do is I'm going to track, we have x, y, pointer x, pointer y, dx, and dy. So the x, y, these are going to be the position of the box. Oh. And the pointer x, this is going to be where you clicked. And the dx, dy is going to be uh, how far from where you clicked. Oh. So now we have like the, these variables to store uh, where the actual box is. And so we could update like on mouse down. We'll set it to pointer x and pointer y instead. And so we just need to update it uh, below as well. Cool. So um, you lost me a little bit. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, so so we're, we're tracking the dx and dy. Those are how far we traveled from the pointer. So not the x and y. The x and y, we're tracking where the actual box is. And so, so current, instead, okay, we, we want to change this to uh, pointer. Pointer, okay. Mm -hmm. Pointer x, pointer y. Yes. And so now, um, all we have to do is one more thing over here, where when we when we put the mouse up, we want to change context.x and context.y to be the new values which is those dx and dy values. Mm, okay. So, so we're basically committing that change. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see, how did we do this? So we did, it's called actions. Uh, these are side effects and you do, then the side effect is assign. And the first argument is context. Uh, mm -hmm. And we don't need, we, don't, we probably don't have a second ar argument here. I think. Yeah, because it's idle. Oh, good, no arguments. And uh, we'll have. Um, was do we want to uh, assign the initial ones? No, wait. Yeah. So we get uh, X. Oh yeah, we sorry. want to do the return thing. And the object assignment. So we do the context. Mm -hmm. And we want to add sign x to like are these initial variables or this is what, I, what what do you mean like this? Uh, so the x we want to change to for example context dot uh, dx because how far it moved like oh oh sorry I, I meant uh, context dot x plus context dot dx because it's wherever the original position of it is plus how far it moved. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's honestly one of the most confusing parts about drag and drop is just all of the math involved, um, which I, it's not that bad once you think about it, but you know it does get a little bit um, annoying. Mm, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, well, and so let's see where we also at. want to we we want to reset the other values too. So we want to uh, reset dx to zero and dy to zero. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, the the dx. Yes. Yeah. Dx to zero and dy to zero. Boop. Great. So, all right. Stepping back and thinking about how this is going to work. Now we're measuring two things. We're measuring 
where the box is and how far we move the box. So in other words, left is now going to be uh, state.context.x plus state.context.dx. So this is where the box is and how far the box moved. Mm. And so we're going to do the same thing for the other one. Hang on. Like, can you can you show me what it is that you wanted me to do because I was not on the screen when you did it? Oh, state.context.y plus I I did it. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Okay, so, so what we're seeing here is that. Oops. All right, cool. So this is this state is now always constantly whenever we have a transition and transition no, 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 no. what um so on transition mm -hmm. to me like it seems weird to me like that the the box is constantly being updated on yeah. transition because to me like uh, is is it sort of like a is it thinking of transition as as a, the, the dragging like to me transitions is just transitions between states in my mind yet it's still being updated yeah yeah so um a, a state being changed can be its finite state change like it's going from idle to dragging but also the context within that state's changing as well so we oh. want to keep track of both of those things oh okay so okay so it's those the, make up it, oh, the, see. Oh. so it's like a state name dragging plus the context yeah. of the state okay that's that's uh, so it's transitioning from that makes sense that makes sense mm -hmm. and so if you play around with the box like it actually works which is awesome wow that is pretty cool mm -hmm. and um a lot of people might be looking at this and saying well, I, I could have done this just you know using functions and is dragging or things like that. Uh, but because we have access to that finite state like idle or dragging, we could actually add some some cool styles based on like whether it's dragging or idle. So uh, I'm I'm going to jump into the CSS just to demonstrate this. Yeah. Real quick. Uh, so if since I'm putting all of that state on data state. If I um, say data states equals dragging, and I target the box, I could give it a, I don't know, let's give it a background of red. And so oh. now you'll see when it's, when it's dragging, it's gonna change color. This is really interesting. Uh, data state, where, like, oh, okay. Like, can you explain to me and other people that have not seen this before, the data state? Ah, all right. So data states that um, that is an attribute. Oops, it's the wrong uh, thing. So if we have body data state equals dragging, mm. so that's an attribute that we add to the body, and that attribute is called a data attribute. And what's really cool is that in JavaScript, you could just say body.datasets.states equals whatever, and that's automatically going to set that data attribute. Oh, okay, so okay. It's, that's what it is. Yeah. I just like didn't connect uh, connect this, which makes... Uh, I think I've actually have used it before. I've just completely forgotten it. Um, it's so useful, yeah. Yeah, so this is what we're doing. Um, and. So that's what we built, uh, why we're doing this. That's funky. That makes a lot of sense. So then we can style based <laughs> yeah. on that. All right, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, so um, one other cool thing, uh, just probably the, yeah, one of the last things I want to show is by representing all of your states in this way, it becomes so much easier to um, to add functionality or even remove functionality. So, want to do one more thing? Let's let's do it. We are we are over okay. time, but uh, like let's 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 finish ah, off okay. with a uh, let's finish like does no how, 
No, let's not do it. I've made this mistake before. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, no because problem. Then, uh, then I think this is good. Yeah. I think yeah. that we've. <laughs> I think that you've really de like we've really demonstrated the, uh, the capabilities of this. No I don't think that this is uh, all that complicated. I've implemented drag and drop schemes, and it's, uh, it becomes absolutely nasty very quickly, uh, to to get a structure, uh, that uh, for it. Uh, that makes a lot of sense in this uh, that is this clean for this little code I think it's it's fine it's really nice um, yeah especially like when you start like adding position locking the state and like uh, locking the positions to things and uh, yeah drag and dropping becomes complicated very hard so any structure is really nice mm hmm and I went ahead and I updated the visualizer to show uh, just our full state machine. Hey, oh no. So. That. So mouse down, jump us to dragging, and then we can mouse move, and then it's, oh, then it has the side effects, and then it's back to dragging. And then mm -hmm. we go mouse up, and then we jump to idle. That's really, really sleek. Uh, yeah. I, all right, that's that's amazing. Uh, we are gonna. I'm gonna take this code and paste it in a uh, in in a gist, um, which you can find if I'm like I'm actually gonna do it now so that people get it. Gist update help go. Right, that's uh, that is it. Uh, that is that is that is X state. Um, we like where where do people find you, David? How do people find you, and how do people find X State? Yeah, so uh, my username on Twitter, GitHub, anywhere is David K Piano, and so that's where you could find me. Uh, also on Copen, where I have a few X State examples as well. X State, you could find more information on xstate.js.org. Bam. Uh, yeah. Uh, before before we go. I would just like to give a little bit of another shout out to Brilliant, uh, our wonderful sponsor. Uh, you can find them at brilliant.org. Ah. Brilliant. Brilliant.org slash FFF. Uh, that link is good because it gives you 20% off. It's really nice for learning computer science fundamentals and uh, machine learning math. Uh, they uh, they have these interactive challenges instead of the normal video courses that you uh, that might not be absolutely perfect when you're learning uh, learning these kinds of concepts. Uh, we really really like them. Make sure you check them out uh, and uh, if you're learning these things. And, uh, and yeah, thank you, Brilliant, for supporting the show. With that yeah. said, uh, we're gonna wrap the stream off because we are. We're uh, a little bit over time. Uh, I would like to thank everybody that joined us. Uh, it's always such a such a pleasure to uh, to start the weeks off with a stream. Uh, I'm a little bit in like a, in a state today, Bendy, but it still like <laughs> with David's help, uh, I managed to actually do a proper drag and drop implementation of X state, which is super super mm -hmm. nice. I've been meaning to uh, uh, check out X state for a long time because so many people are excited about it. Uh, and I, I really see now, especially with uh, the, I, I like thinking about the structure and application in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just really, really nice. Uh, and it also makes it really easy to communicate with stakeholders. There's so many nice things about this. Yeah. Um, I, uh, and that's it. I'm going to close the stream off. Thank you so much, everyone, right. for joining. Uh, and uh, until next Monday morning, stay curious.